Hello, uh, welcome to another UTS Startups Confessions. <laughs> Let's wrap up there. Uh, down, downhill from here. Uh, we're here to talk about corporate innovation with a very special friend and someone who I respect so deeply. Uh, there is no one I respect more deeply on this topic. Michael Neary, Dr. Michael Neary, uh, who is uh, currently with DXC, uh, and I would say is running the best corporate innovation kind of program in the form of the Invitational uh, for the DXC. So that's a wonderful program to help uh, DXC as a large company engage with a lot of small companies and then help those small companies to achieve what they can not otherwise achieve. It's working incredibly well. But also a uh, wonderful background doing a lot of things that you'll hear about in a second. Um, I'm going to kick off because I want to hear from you. Okay. Um, Michael, what is corporate innovation and why is it so hard? So, Mary, to me, and I, I think this is really important if you think about corporate innovation, it is about the commercialisation of an idea. And, and that's a definition used in the research. Why that's important? Because I think too often we forget, we focus on the idea bit, particularly in corporates, and we miss the commercialisation. The commercialisation is where we get credibility. Successful startups know how to pitch that. They can get private equity. They can get out there and tell a commercial story. Too often in corporate, it just becomes that idea part of a focus. Um, why, why, why it becomes hard is, I think the machine of a corporate, and I think Murray, we were talking, and you had a really good point. Organi organizations organize. We like predictability. We like to know we forecast $500,000 this quarter, it's going to be $500,000. We need 200 people, it's going to be 200 people. Innovation comes in and says, well, actually, we're going to grow. We might need a, another few people. We might need something else. It may or it may not work. Uh, you might have to do three things and one pays off. That's almost the antithesis of this machine uh, and the mechanistic approach, I think, of organisations where predictability is rewarded, innovation, disturbs. Uh, I will say as well, I meant to say this earlier, speaking of innovation, we have Russa behind us, uh, Tech Central's artist in residence who is preparing a very special piece that we'll reveal later in the stream. But stay tuned and thank you very much, Russa, for the wonderful work you do uh, telling the stories of what we talk about. So I think that's the next point for myself is why bother? So if it's hard, why should people try to do otherwise? So I think, Murray, the, one of the reasons companies die is they don't innovate. From the day a company's founded, might be a startup, grows up, ultimately it is always dying. Uh, markets move, things happen. Um, why should we do it is because I think it, it provides that renewal of the organisation. Uh, it provides, we know, benefits to the share price because you know, research shows that you get a better multiple if you're a company. Um, it provides future revenue streams. It sometimes provides really good profit because if you're the first to market, sometimes you can extract a premium during that phase. So that's a really important uh, benefit for the company. The tough thing is though, it's not necessarily this quarter. So this, this short term approach that most companies track to is a challenge because it is, how do you balance getting a dollar tomorrow when you've got to have it this month? And so I think it's, it's that benefit of tomorrow is there, it will be there, it will be there for shareholders, for employees, um, and for customers. Is that where a lot of the problem comes from, that the incentives for an individual don't align with the incentives of long-term investors? Yeah, I think so, Murray, and it's, it's particularly, and I, I might exaggerate a bit, but if you think about a startup entrepreneur, uh, which I know some of you are doing, which is, is so great, but you're probably putting your own time in, a bit of capital, um, if you pay off, and I'm sure you're, you're all following this dreams, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars of profit. You do the same in a company, you get it wrong, you can be sacked, you can be demoted, you can be put into a backwater, you get it right, you get a lovely movie ticket for you and a friend. What would you do? I'm sure DXC rewards people better than that. I'm not talking about, yeah, I should say I'm talking here just as a, a person, not as DXC, and, and yeah, that's a, that's a different reward mechanism. Hmm. So where does, actually, we'll, we'll get to the solutions in a second, uh, because we'll save that for the end of the video, but it's worth hanging on for. Uh, can we talk a bit about what doesn't work uh, and, and why people do the things that don't work? 
I think uh, they do the easy things, they do the pretty things. So you get things like corporate labs set up. Um, everyone feels really good because now I don't have to innovate. Um, I can go and take someone to a lab, it's not my responsibility, it's someone else's. It's over there. Our innovation is over there in the corner. Innovation should be for all of us. Um, and so I think there's that um, abdicating of responsibility. I think also sometimes we just come up with good titles. You, you might have heard some of the corporate wizards that appear in other roles. Um, I, I deliberately decided to wear a suit because I was thinking about wearing something different. But, you know, do the easy things. Sorry, Murray. Put on a black <laughs> T-shirt and you do. look cool. You yeah. know, the hard thing is, how do I find a commercial proposition? How do I build my business case? How do I test the market? How do I back this deal? How do I get all my friends to help me within the company pull this off? Much tougher than wearing a black T-shirt. I should have gotten dressed up. I <laughs> should have known better. But uh, I think that, uh, let's kind of dive into the meat of this. So it's, a, it's hard to do. It's worth doing. What do we do? And who does it? Let's start with who does it? What are the kind of characteristics of people that can change this? So I think overall, you want passionate people. You want resilient people, determined people. And I think that's been found in the research. You know, you can, um, you can do this as a project, it may or may not happen. Um, there's been companies done research, the volunteers are the success marker. You know, so you want people that want to do this, they want to invest, they want to put their time, and by invest I mean investing their time and their career. Uh, so I think you're looking for that type of person and then anyone can do it. Anyone in a company can contribute to a company's innovation and there's a number of ways I think you can do that. Okay, and there's probably people watching this, I know definitely here probably in the camera as well, uh, that identify with those characteristics. Is there a kind of classification within that that they should start to think about of who they are in this picture? Yeah, um, and I, th I think about my own career, I also think about what's, what's been written on this topic. Uh, and I think it comes down to around five roles. And the first is the ideas person. Um, they, might be, uh, they might discover the idea, so they might find it out in the market. They might find a startup and bring it in. Um, they might invent the idea. They might work in an R&D lab. That person might or might not be the right one um, to actually take it to market. Um, I think 3M had a guy, you know, the little post-it notes, um, used them in hymn books thought it was a cool idea, everyone thought it was a cool idea, not sure what to do with it. Arthur uh, Fry, was it? Yep. Good memory. <laughs> um, but they, they ended up pairing him up with what I'd call a second role, which is the entrepreneur. And, and that's been the role Pinchot described in his work. Uh, and that's the one that makes this, this a commercial reality. They take the vision, they make it a reality. They work across the company. Uh, they probably use a lot of informal networks. They take some risks. They might ignore one or two corporate directives. Uh, not, not breaching any big governance, but just getting things through. Um, just helping, helping the way through, pulling it all together. So I think that's the, that's the, if you like, the hub role, and these roles will have networks running off them. Um, they then need a team, and that's something any of us can do. It might be someone in finance just giving a bit of advice how to structure a deal. It might be marketing saying, look, I could write that out for you. Uh, it could be IT, it could be any of the roles that many of us fill within a company. Uh, just helping out. Might be just saying, well done. Um, the CEOs and the senior execs also have a role. It's not necessarily doing much except protecting it. They're effectively, a, can be a bit of a mafia boss, protecting the whole innovation market. When someone goes to try and have a go and take it out, uh, just stepping in and going, no, I've approved it, no, I'm involved in it, I think it's a good idea, might be pats on the back, but it might be also putting the, the shield around the, the innovation until it grows to be a bit bigger. And then I think the last role is, you know, anyone else in the company that's not involved, just stay out the way. You can do a lot by not running across the racetrack in the middle of someone trying to innovate and not undermining. Okay. Sound good? Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's nice when you can look at that and say, that's me. Yeah. I, I do have lots of ideas and I don't do anything with them. I should do this. If I, if I am that ideas person, what do I do? If you're the ideas person, I think you, you work with the idea and then you find someone, if it's not you and it may be you, and that's why I use the word roles because like a theatre, they are a role. You move in and out of them. One project you might be, or one innovation you might be leading it, one you might be a follower, one might you just be a bystander. Um, but if you've got that idea, be passionate, 
you will be able to find someone in the company that can help you with that idea. It might be an executive, it might be a manager, it might be just a peer, it might be a junior that knows how to get this done. They might know how to write a good business case. They might be good at project management. It's just finding a, a like-minded soul, really, I think is the important thing. So uh, the other people are the kind of recipients of the ideas, the supporters of ideas. So being attuned to other people that have a kind of random idea and, and want to do something with it or are coming to you for help and getting behind those people. Mm. So I think though it's, it's about helping. It's about being there, connected. Um, how do you help someone? How do you, you know, you, everyone has different skills they bring to bear in this. It's a team sport. Think of it like rugby. Everyone's got different positions. Um, so it's about how you, if the ball comes near you, how you move it forward. Mm. And then uh, the people watching other people do things, being attuned to the need to protect those things. Yeah, so how do you, particularly as an exec, often execs want to do something. It's probably not doing a lot, but protecting. Mm. Um, and it's not always budget. It, it can be just anything else that, that, that they need to do. Mm. Uh, and being part of that team, and as I say, to, you know, try not to undermine it, try to take yourself out, because, yeah, this innovation might absolutely transform the work you do today, but it will build the company for tomorrow, and that's the best way any of us can help our companies grow is you know, with that innovation. Better that we manage the decline of a product and the growth of a new than have a competitor take it out. Hmm. And it's not about protecting someone that's going to then take your job by doing amazing work. It's you both are responsible for the success of that hmm. and get to enjoy a company that works because of what you've done. And it's, it's a good place to work. I think every, well, I would say everyone loves innovation. Um, but that's my biases coming through. But I think it's good for the brand. I think it's good for consumers. Keeps their products fresh. Keeps it connected to you. Okay. It's and that kind of keeping things fresh and all the good things for the company. Let's zoom out for a second. Uh, and this in my last two questions. What does that mean outside the company? What does the kind of future of Australia look like if we can get this right? So I think the so for Australia, this is a, a big imperative. Um, I think the short-termism of a lot of the, the approaches we've taken has led us to see some of our best brands decline. Um, so this, this is a really big national imperative. How does Australia overall innovate? How do we encourage the startup community? But the community that is, is overlooked often is the corporate community. The corporate innovation community is almost a, a funny thing off to the side. The startups we love, we love looking at Atlassian and the heroes there, but few would name something that's going on within a company that is old, bring something new to market. Mm. So we should celebrate that. We should. So we should celebrate it, we should find that renewal and take it to the world as well. This is about how we build jobs, how we build markets, how we keep our companies alive. Okay, so if that doesn't resonate with you, uh, there's something wrong with you. Uh, and I think the, the next steps, like that's what to look forward to for Australia, but for the individuals watching, uh, what's next for them? Uh, I, I will say in the comments of this video, uh, I've already posted a link to a PDF that goes into more detail on some of the things that you've spoken about and were nice enough to pull together for me. Thank you very much. Uh, I've wanted that document for the last 10 years to be able to send to people and say, just read this and do the things. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for pushing me um, and but, your patience. No, it's good. It's worth the wait. And uh, I think it deserves to become a longer document and a, some kind of book that can then kind of help people more. Would you say people should reach out with uh, recommendations of case studies or questions or anything? Case studies, questions, experiences. I was, I was at a lunch. Um, today and I threw this around and uh, it resonated I think with a number of people, particularly the short termism and the, the challenge of innovation in a corporate environment that is, that is often under so much pressure day to day, week to week, that you don't think about what about next year. Um, the life cycle of, of a lot of CEOs can be short. Um, luckily a number stay around and build their companies, but it, it is something that we've all got to think about. I like your metaphor about the farms, mm. uh, please. <laughs> so I, I think too often today we, we do our harvest and then we don't sow. And if you don't sow, you can't reap. It, it is very cost effective to just 
take a crop out the ground and not replant it and hope some seeds come up and then harvest the next year. You might get some seeds that fell off the wheat that you can harvest if you're lucky. Maybe second year you might get a little. Third year there's going to be nothing. And so I think it is. You can't reap what you don't sow. So very important that you, you think about that, I think, as an analogy because it is what are you doing today that someone is going to harvest next year and the year after? Um, and then how do we encourage you to do that? Because uh, too often we encourage you just to do something this month or this quarter. Not saying we don't want that. It's about balance. Okay. Uh, I'll encourage Rosa to turn around her painting if she's willing, uh, just to bring us home. Uh, because again, for the people at home, please do reach out. Uh, you're on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm Michael on your Neary. post. <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to find him. But please, if you have uh, kind of case studies or want to reach out and have a chat, please do. Beautiful. We've done a cover design for your book. <laughs> <laughs> And capturing the farming metaphor beautifully. Uh, I love it. Thank you very much, Rosa. And thank you very much, Michael. Thank you, Murray. And thanks for pushing me to get the paper out. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Thanks very much, everyone. Please join me in thanking Michael Neary. Thank you.